Hi, Father Brad, January 26, 2022. I was uh, having to do some, well, I don't have to do it. I, I was doing some work in my photo collection and I was in the mid 80s and I came across some pictures that I thought I'd show you from that era. Um, one of them is from 1983 and I think I told you once that um, we used to go to my grandparents farm and they would hide eggs out in the yard and since I had some color blindness <laughs> I wish I had a violin right now uh, I had all sorts of difficulty finding them and so somebody would come finally and stick my head like three inches over the egg oh there's an egg but anyway, so this is this is a picture. We're all grown up now, but this is a picture from 1983, and my grandmother started hanging eggs on trees just as an Easter decoration. This is uh, Rita Bear, and then this is myself and my oldest brother and his son. Um, we too, myself and my older brother. Uh, for some years looked uh, very much alike and used to get mixed up. We don't anymore, but anyway, so this is uh, 1983. So his name is Kurt and his son's name is Larry. So that's uh, Easter egg day. Um, then from 1984, and the occasion was that we got a, uh, we bought a 1958 Cadillac, Cadillac Eldorado to use as a business card. What happened is that we never could keep it running. Uh, <laughs> so it was conducive to that. But anyway, uh, we were taking a picture with the car. And again, myself and my brother, Kurt, Larry, Rita Bear. This is uh, my father, John, which remember I told you a story that we called him Rusty or used to be called Rusty, and then uh, my brother's other son, Chris. So we were there posing with this nice uh, Cadillac, which they didn't make too many of. Um, so it was kind of a rare car, and you know, just a big, uh, beautiful tank, actually. So there we are there. And then in 1987, I uh, was the photographer at my cousin's wedding in the Bay Area, and I had, uh, even though this is the one picture I didn't take, obviously, because I'm in it. Um, this is at the reception in Half Moon Bay, um, which is uh, on the coast uh, a bit south of San Francisco. So anyway, there we are, all smiley and happy on this happy occasion. Uh, they're still married, so that's always good news. So anyway, um, and then you see my... Uh, full beard and whatever else. I kind of keep looking different because the beard went on and off, the mustache stayed, the glasses changed, and then ultimately my hair just started to wane. So now, I mean, I don't know if I'm recognizable or not from any of these pictures. Maybe not. If you don't think I am, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> but <laughs> so sad it would be true. So on the parish front, uh, this uh, coming weekend is when we're having the net ministries um, for our youth. Uh, we're, we were, have, we're going to have a good turnout for that from the, the, from the parish and the region. And it starts on Friday at 5 p.m. It, it would go through Saturday, uh, through the day, and end at the vigil mass on Saturday evening. So uh, that'll be exciting. Again, there's a team of 12 that will be arriving tomorrow that put these on, and uh, they have a, a really wonderful reputation for stirring the youth in their faith. Um, just not too far off also is the Valentine's Dinner, which is a fundraiser uh, for the youth to go to the Idaho Catholic Youth Conference. and. Uh, please uh, do consider supporting this. Um, uh, we try to uh, subsidize as much of the cost as we can. So that will depend on um, the participation of the, the, the parish and uh, 
we're asking for your generosity on that. That that is a whole weekend, a very profound weekend from Friday night to Sunday midday. Uh, it usually concludes with uh, a mass with the bishop, and there have been in the past up to 13, 1400 youth uh, coming from all over Idaho. So anyway, um, it's it's quite a uh, a vibrant weekend, and again. Um, uh, we uh, we want to support our youth and and their grounding in the faith that they can then take with them through their whole lives. Uh, next week is Catholic Schools Week, so the week's events for this year are uh, focusing on corporal works of mercy. So please uh, uh, pray for and support our local school here and for all Catholic schools. So you'll be hearing more. Um, uh, about uh, the Catholic Schools Week as we go through. Um, our uh, uh, proceeds from our uh, art auction gala, uh, we were very successful, thank you so much. It was a beautiful an, uh, event, it was just very nice. And uh, everyone uh, had a good time. And uh, anyway, we um, uh, netted $33,000 as, a, again, a fundraiser for the, the parish budget. And uh, I mentioned on the night of the auction that we'll be uh, funneling some of that back into the uh, community. So uh, just to let you know, roughly 4,000 of that uh, is going back uh, into the 12 uh, uh, agencies that we support for local services here in the Lewis and Clark Valley. So, um, and this is just uh, a, uh, I guess, an example or uh, something that we want to make um, very natural is, is tithing uh, back. Um, so uh, we want to make sure that we do honor God and, and, and sh uh, share with others uh, uh, what we're able to, to do here. Um, the stewardship program has come to a close. Uh, this is uh, something that will be yearly uh, touch base with stewardship and, and do an assessment and it keeps the parish vibrant because we're always thinking uh, about that but it's been very successful and um, this is a matter of um, you know assessing how we, uh, what we give to the church, not only uh, monetarily, but in our uh, time and in our talent. And um, we uh, have had an increase of offertory of $85,000 and committed one-time gifts of $25,000. So this combined amount of $110,000 from this last uh, campaign is a great testimony to the generosity of all saints. I have mentioned that to you before. Uh, this community is very generous and uh, I am always pleasantly, uh, I'm always pleased uh, seeing the results of your generosity. And uh, again, this is a matter of uh, serving, using all of that to serve uh, Christ Christ is the center of all of this, so we don't want to ever lose track of, of him, and so it's a matter of serving him. That's where our generosity goes. It comes from God and then goes back to God. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to see the new statues of uh, Mary and Joseph in the nave. They are really, really beautiful, and took a long time to, to get them there. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the addition that, that they are to the, the nave. Uh, they fit in like a glove. Um, I have to uh, attribute some of that to my aesthetic sense, because I kind of live aesthetically uh, in, in a large part. Um, the statues that were on the wall from St. James originally, Mary and Joseph, that were on the sides by the cry rooms, those have been moved out to the nave. They fit in like a glove in the nave, and so they are there to greet people along with the archangels uh, as far as coming into the, the church. 
and then we've had donations of icons. All of the all of the icons have been donated. Um, all of these things that we're we're doing are donations, so they're not coming out of our budget, but they're coming out of the interest and the generosity of uh, donors. So in the place of where the statues were by the cry rooms, we have uh, two beautiful new icons that were donated, and we have some new icons that are on the main sanctuary wall going across, and there's room for a few more there. We can fill up this whole facility with beautiful icons, reminding us of the lives of the saints. The lives of the saints should always point us, as the Blessed Mother does, always to her son, uh, always pointing to Christ, the saints, and, and Mary. So anyway, uh, we've been able to do this through uh, the generosity of quite a number of people since we have moved into this building, and so that's still still evolving. For uh, the Wisdom of Fulton Sheen this week, there is a very short quotation, very short but profound. Begin with your own emptiness and seek him, capital H, who can fill it. Begin with your own emptiness and seek him who can fill it. I think sometimes we try to fill our uh, emptiness, which probably each, each of us have some experience of. We tend to seek it everywhere but with Christ. It's never going to be filled up. Only Christ can fill our emptiness. So think of Christ first. Um, uh, don't fill your em emptiness with trying to manipulate uh, others or um, uh, you know, try to, to, to work all these angles to fill you, um, but ask Christ to fill you. And um, it's only when Christ fills us can we uh, really understand that we are in a state of fulfillment and, and in a state of uh, Christ's grace. So let me give you my blessing. Uh, the Lord be with you. And may uh, the Lord bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.